Hello everybody and welcome back to another Magic the Gathering Arena video. Sorry I've had a little break um, in recordings. The reason for that is that I've moved house. Uh, it took me a while to get moved, to get set up, get all my equipment back together and get some time uh, to be able to put into recording. But we're finally there. Um, and we're back in Alchemy with an equipment deck. So I'll quit Men's E2. We did have one before. Um, and we're featuring a couple of the new-ish cards. So we've got Nahiri Forge and Fury. This is a six-costing legendary core artificer, 5-4, affinity for equipment, so it can be as cheap as a red and a white. Um, it has whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. You may play equipment spells this way without paying their mana costs, given that we have uh, 15 artifacts, of which 15 are equipments in the deck, there's a good chance for sitting equipment, uh, which is very nice, and also very nice it's going to be cheaper. We're also running Nahiri's Resolve, which is a 5 costing enchantment. Creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 and have haste. At the beginning of your end step, exile any number of non-token artifacts and or creatures you control. Uh, I don't know why we'd want to exile our own tokens anyway. Return from those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of your next upkeep. So. Um, why is that good? Well, that's good obviously because a lot of our equipments have Formiridin. Formiridin means it comes in attached to a creature. So if we exile the equipment and then it gets returned to the battlefield, we're going to get an extra creature attached to that artifact. Now, normally that would be bad because it wouldn't have haste, but the heroes will give haste as well. Um, so our Formiridin things include Hexgold Sledge, Bladehog Cleaver, and the War Whip. Um, so I'll go through those in a second, but basically we have lots of ways of creating more and more rebels to attach our equipment to. The other nice thing about Nihiru's Resolve is it can sort of protect your creatures from sorcery spell interaction, sorcery speed interaction, because you exile them and in the beginning um, of your next upkeep they come back in. So our opponent's turn, they're gone. Uh, obviously we wouldn't want to do that if we need them as blockers, but if we don't, and we're the aggressor, which with this deck we usually will be, we're just protecting them from sorcery speed interaction, things like board wipes, which is very nice against equipment decks. Um, so to work from the bottom up now, two fragment reality uh, and four molten impact as our interaction. I won't go through those two cards as we've covered them quite a lot in previous videos. We're also running four rebel salvo, which I will cover. <laughs> this is a three costing instant uh, with affinity for equipment, so it can be as cheap as one red. Rebel Salvo deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker that permanently loses indestructible. So this is the in our deck to get rid of the Sheldreds, to get rid of the bigger creatures. Um, we don't have any flat destroy in the deck, but obviously we do. We can get rid of particularly big things of Fragment and then use these two spells to get rid of the monster, something smaller. Four of Kemper's Outfitter. So this is an alchemy card, which is a 2-1 cat artificer for one white. When it enters the battlefield, you choose one. Choose an equipment card in your hand, it perpetually gains equip one. Target equipment you control perpetually gains equip one. So basically any equipment, hand or battlefield, we can give equip one. Now that is very, very nice because a lot of our equipments, like this one, has equip cost of five, equip cost of three. Um, these both equip cost of two. This does an equip cost of two. So this actually reduces pretty much every equipment apart from the sledge in our deck. Um, and down to one is very nice. Synergizes very well with the Blade Hold War Whip, which uh, equip abilities you activate of other equipment cost one less to activate. So this basically, combined with this, will make something free to equip. Um, Inchblade Companion is an alchemy card from a previous set. It's a one white um, artifact creature equipment insect. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one plus one. Um, it's a one one itself. A creature, whenever it becomes attached to a creature, you create a token that's a copy of Inchblade Companion, except it doesn't have this ability. This triggers only once each turn, so we can create lots of little 1-1 one -one equipments um, that reconfigure or attach for two. Um, note that there is a bit of a nombo with the War Whip in the sense that this only makes equip abilities cheaper, and this is technically a reconfigure ability, so this won't get cheaper with War Whip. However, we can give it equip one still with Kemba's Outfitter. Um, and this is basically a way for us to generate more equipments and more creatures to put those equipments on. Um, generating more equipments is nice for our affinity with for equipment cards um, in terms of giving us little equipments that we can equip onto stuff to make Nahiri exile more cards off the top. Um, and all around just a good equipment synergy in the deck. We're running Jewel Kadeen first Gold Warden, which is a red and a white legendary creature, human rebel 2 to the trample. That was a mouthful. Uh, when it attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then if draw Kadeen's power is four or greater, draw a card. Now, what this basically means is if we equip draw Kadeen with anything that increases its power at all, 
it will always draw a card on attack, which is very, very nice because we have Interplate Companion, we can equip to it, or any of our other equipment apart from the War Whip will increase your Kadeen's power when attached. Um, not to mention, if we have the Resolve out, that's going to increase its power as well. It has Trample, which is nice, so we can stack all of our equipments on this as a finisher if we need to, um, and it's a way of us drawing cards. Hex Gold Sledge is kind of one of the cards that I would say goes as far as making the deck. This is why this deck works in Alchemy and it doesn't work in Standard. Hex Gold Sledge is a 3 costing artifact equipment that has Vermiridin, so it comes in attached to a 2-2 Rebel. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you also conjure a card named Goblin Gavalier, Goblin Gavalier onto the battlefield. Equipped creature gets plus 1, plus 0, um, and it has a quick 1. Goblin Gavalier is a one costing with what with trample uh, that gets plus two plus over each equipment attached to it. So it's like a kind of bomb for all of our equipment to be attached to that we can throw at the opponent um, and do a bunch of damage. And obviously if they block it, it'll die, but that doesn't necessarily matter. The, the beauty of Hex Gold Sledge is that it gives us more bodies to put our equipments on. The problem that equipment decks have and the problem that they have in standard is that you don't often have enough creatures to put the equipment on. If the opponent uses a few destroy spells, your creatures are gone, you've got nothing to equip them to. Bringing equipment itself that brings in two bodies is very nice for three mana, trust me. Um, Bladehold War Whip is a three costing for Mirrodin equipment again. Um, it has equip abilities you activate cost one less, as I mentioned. Equip creature has double strike, equipped five. The reason this is nice, all the equip being cheaper is beautiful for us. Bringing in a body that has 2-2 two, two double strike effectively, that then we can hopefully target with Kemba's Outfitter. This is one of our main targets that we can give our double creatures double strike for one mana. That's the idea. We're running one of the Sword of Forge and Frontier, which is basically protection from red and green and do some nice stuff, and one of the Once and Future, protection from blue and black. So between them, we're covering all colours with protection apart from white. The idea with these really is just that they're there for a bit of extra card advantage for us in the form of equipment and they're both blooming cool cards to, to run so running these note that if you run the sword, the sword of forge and frontier on to a creature you can't equip any red equipment onto that creature because it has protection from red it's not going to be a big problem for the deck but just as something to note Bladehold Cleaver is another alchemy card that makes this equipment deck. So this is two, a red and a white for an equipment for Mirrodin. Equipped creature gets plus two plus two, so it comes in as a four, four for four. And whenever equipped creature dies, draft a card from the spellbook. Now the spellbook basically has loads of creatures. So if our creature gets killed, we can draft another creature that we can put that um, equipment on. Things that are particularly useful or interesting in here are the Gavalier again, um, Hero Oxen Ridge is okay, this is okay, this one, the Mirror and Crusader, which is a white, white, and one, not that it costs matters when you're drafting it, but it gets double strike protection from black and protection from green, so this can be a finisher against those colours and is not to be overlooked. Um, and then you've got the Oxida finisher, which is a 7 costing 7 5, affinity for trample, <coughs> affinity for equipment and trample, uh, 7 5, which can also be a big finisher for the deck. I'm running one of Nahiri the Unforgiving, because why not? It's a four-costing Planeswalker, which is completed, so we can pay three and two life instead. Um, plus one, until your next turn, up to one time, creature attacks a player each combat if able. So because it's a player, that means that creature couldn't attack Nahiri. It also means that they have to attack, and we tend to be aggressive, so it means they can't block with that creature. So if they've got something like a Sheldred they're sitting behind, we can force it to attack us. We can discard, then draw, uh, which pairs well with its final ability of zero. Exile target creature or equipment card with mana value less than the hero's loyalty from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it. That token gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So if we create a token of the Hex Gold Sledge, for example, um, it's going to bring in the 2-2 Rebel. It's going to bring in a Goblin Gavalier. We can use the Sledge for one turn and then it gets exiled, but we'll keep the two tokens that it brought in. Well, the Gavalier and the token that it brought in. So that's actually a very nice little combo. That is the deck. We're running only 23 lands. Average is 2.6. The reason I'm only going for 23 is really we only need to get to this level of um, mana. And I think with the four Forsaken Crossroads giving us a scry, that should be enough. Let's see if we get mana screwed. But otherwise, let's have some fun, have some games with equipment, and see how we get on. All right, here we go. Planes Warped. The planes have been walked. Not the most useful, but... Uh, green and blue. That's a cool sleeve. Is that the Lord of the Rings one? 
very cool. Oh, it must be because they've got the one ring here. Oh, so it's bant, okay. Get in for R2, and we'll play this. Might as well hold on to Nahiri for a turn. Nice. It's just some value in one card, this thing. this in paper magic. You probably want to take this team. So if we draw a land, we can play the sword once in future. We don't though. We could play Nahiri on three to search for one. We could just equip this on here. Be a four one. Could play that, not much point. Maybe we should play this to find the land. Discard the sledge. That's not a land, but oh well. <laughs> it's pretty nice. We can get the sledge back from our graveyard, which will give us a cavalier. So you actually get to keep something, which is nice. Oh, so this is just a run of the mill toxic deck, eh? Uh, <laughs> like so. Play this. They'll probably block with the chorus, but it'll be a complete jump. Surveil too, and then cast our Molten Impact from the graveyard. Unless they've got something to do with this, of course. Not entirely out of the realm. Nope. Mm, let's put them both in there. to attack. This is going to attack anyway, probably. Has to attack a player. Yeah, can't even attack Kahiri with it. And now we can bring the Hex Gold Sledge in. I know we can't. Less than, not less than or equal. Uh, yeah, okay. We can equip it onto the Gavalier.
get a copy, which we'll keep, and we'll play our Joker Dean, I think. <laughs> Good one. Good stuff, all right. Last one, one. okay. <clears throat> Looking forward to uh, trying this a little bit more. Uh, we haven't got any of our A1 drops, but we've got an impact to catch us up, which could be what we need. So, we'll give it a go, shall we? Creaturey, I suppose. It's not creaturey yet, so we can keep playing the lands, the scries. Uh, we don't actually need that because this has a quick one and we've not got any other equipment. Wedding announcement. Sledge it is. Double park whilst they're one ones. Suits me. Okay. And then we'll play Joel Cadeen. Hold on to this for something bigger. So far they are going up in life. Like that's something bigger. Deck, but we haven't seen that many humans yet. Okay, we're going to see some more now, I suppose, of the token variety. Fine. I would have kept that back if I had you. Who am I? Uh, okay. We could blink the sledge with that. Yeah, then next turn this 4-4 four four will have haste, so this is probably the right way around. Do we trade the Gavalier? At this stage, maybe. Uh, fair. Trade everything. We have another Jorkadine, so that's not the end of the world. And this we can link. Gosh, gonna pay four and sack a land to draw a guard, really. Quick 
this here. Oh, that was a bit pointless. We can do that. We can do that. I suppose we could get rid of these just to protect them from a board wipe. That would have been a sensible choice, given that they're going to have haste anyway. And they're no good blocking for me right now. Yeah, that was a bit stupid. Could have protected them against sorcery speed removal. Bing, bing, bing. Okay, we've got this anyway. about do it, shouldn't it? Should indeed. GG. Two for two. Equipment deck. Looking fun. Looking good. Let's keep going. All right. Mm, okay. Could be worse. Maybe. White. Removal? That's not removal. So we don't want it. We want some removal because this looks creaturey. Hey, there's some. Jorpedine. Realm Breaker. slow to deal with us, but maybe not. I have managed to top three grade hole. <laughs> you can get a land for your trouble. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Here we go. Chuggle butt. Um, we only got one coloured land thanks to the Triath Ruins, but... Mm, okay. Destroy, which they didn't want to use on this, I'd say, so it's probably a go for the throat. Right, okay. okay, okay. Here's the wall whip. Or the You can play your shouldered if you want, that would be nice for me. Right, well. So they get to seek a card of my value too. Hmm, interesting. So just in case. I have done most of this damage to myself. I'm not convinced by the Dranath Ruins so far. I thought it was fun with the companion, but we might have to ditch this. Companion and all the little uh, rebels. Land. 
So do we play this or do we play this? across because this is making them all cheaper so now these are both good blockers got to worry about these roaches man thankfully they're not enabling things like this but agriculture okay we can get rid of that so if we do like this here They have. So, no attacks, but they are out of cards now, and we are not. March toward perfection, eh? Nice top deck. Let you draft something. Yeah, lots of nasty stuff in there. Pretty bad for us. That is pretty bad. So what do we do about this? Neary just makes that attack me. That's not that helpful. Even Rebel Salvo doesn't kill it and we can't sack that many permanents. This would give us some permanents to sack. on here. That makes it do five. Could equip this. That's eight. We don't want that. Let's uh that's still eight. Eight permanence is everything I have. this one can we? No, because it's not an equip. Equip abilities, that's annoying. Okay, we'll leave this like this for now. We'll take a hit from this and then we'll work out if we could do this in a more efficient way when our time is not running out. Maybe with this on here plus the cleaver, that'll take it down to seven. Gosh, and it'll give us an extra permanent. Oh, but the problem is taking a hit from this now means it's got death touch. It'll do six, then it'll do five. So we actually can't take a hit. So we have to just do this, which is absolute madness. Eight permanents. Hmm. So we could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. We're alive. <laughs> um, I've not got lots to do though. How did they get that man? They got the march and they found that shitter in it. Phyrexian Obliterators, that is good against us. But we didn't have the best start either, so we'll give the deck more chance, that was the harsh one. Could always try putting in some exile effects, so March of 
whether that march of underworld would be like otherworldly light or um, fragment reality or something to deal with those but I don't think it's that common that we need to cater for it in best of one to be honest obviously we would put some exile into our deck for best of three if we were going to try and play it in that forum yeah just one to note one to note Sort of help us in one game. They probably just removed your Kadeen and then attack, but we've got to make them. The problem with these is they're a little bit expensive when we've got expensive stuff. Although three, I suppose you can play it for for a three through three loyalty planes or go. It's not bad, especially if it's then getting you back something that. Creates creatures, probably still fine. I don't know. Um, so let's just get rid of one of these, stem some of the damage. I want to play some of the fun stuff out of here. Oh, there's, such, there's such fun stuff in here. And the Chris. Can discard your four cards? No. Okay, we can I play this on white. Uh, it's a creature, which we are lacking, but this can give me a creature. Do we play this as a three? Plus it? To, Try and save some damage. It does cost us two life anyway. Maybe we're better playing this. Um, that can get me back, Jaw Kadeen. It's not helpful. It can draw and discard. Let's play this. Two, two. I'm sure they've got something else. That's six damage. <sighs> okay. So I think we have to play the cleaver. And I hope they don't have a steel effect. They've got traumatic prank. We're just dead. They have. Oh no. Well, I just immediately assumed that's what it was. But the first try can life link. You can get it equipped. Mm, we're probably still in some serious trouble. If you're going to do that, you should have done it before you attacked and we'd have lost. Throwing away traumatic prank. Okay. Protection from blue and black isn't that helpful against mono red. Yeah, we still die, but annoying. <laughs> oof, oof. Okay, we struggled with early game creatures again there, but we because of the, if we don't have our one drops, we just lose on the spot. I think. Mm, okay, all right. I uh, tweaked the deck a little bit, so lowered the number of of um, the Nahiri's enchantment down to two from three, um, and I changed one of the swords of once and future into the other sword that protects from red and green, and I added two fragment realities. 
um, as I lowered the number of the four drop equipment took by one as well so just some small tweaks but gives us some outs against uh, mono red and against um, and against Phyrexian obliterators and things and look, we've drawn one of them now already so Grixis Grixis spells by the looks of it so probably not going to get a ton of use out of Fragment Reality here. Um, yeah, the sledge is nice. Gives a couple of creatures them to deal with. And if they play like a Rusko, we've got... Well, we can use either of these probably. Given I doubt they have any cheap creatures. Lots of blue, considering. Like they've chosen all this blue, so maybe they're running that steel spell. Okay, they have dealt with those two creatures fairly well. Sword of Once and Future could be nice against them so far. Um, so we need to find some creatures so we will start scrying. That's not a creature. Play the sword as long as it resolves. types of cards, cantrippy blues and hmm. haughty gin. Could be Rusko like Wincom as well, but it's blue with a splash, so maybe a Rusko and a gin. Similar to the one I made. That's a nice top deck for us. So we can play this as well. this. Give it protection from blue and black. If it gets that far it will be very nice. Mm, okay, so we'll play this on red. This is open for both of these, which is good. And we don't need more land, thank you. We've got plenty of that. And the second zone is nice for some creatures to put our stuff on. And no instance of sorceries in their hand is interesting. That isn't the best news. concerns us really. Time to get some more creatures. Bang bang. I can go in there. You can stay. Oh I should have put that in the graveyard. Could cast it for free with the sword. Whoops. Oh, I suppose we can cast it free with the sword next time. fetch with that. Fading Hope would be pretty good, but they haven't got any target. Well, they haven't got any good targets and help through. That's not that helpful for them. Can melt through this one more. We'll do this. And 
let's do this, then we can equip the sledge. Onto this one, no point putting it on this one because it's protection. Oh, it's red, of course. That was just silly, but at least we can uh, equip these again. Can't block because protection. Uh, cleaver will be nice. Salvo we can get rid of because they're just running creatures pretty much. Not running that many creatures, I mean. And we've got three damage in the bank anyway. Yeah, sword wins. The one of sword. Okay. Oh, we actually got our inch bay companions. That works well with the rebel salvo. Look, a pirate is playing black with an evolved sleeper. Um, I guess we'll just hold open level salvo, seems like a good move. Point. Happy with the trade since we have another one. Can't play this now. But Yes, maybe they're running like. Okay. Mm. Kind of want that for the cleaver. Don't want to trade for an informant though. Which is okay. Cleaver, so we can start to actually get some uh, some cards, or oh, we'll get some damage in, or we'll get through these blockers at least. Put that on here. Put this one on here. Mix it three three. And both are good to attack. They should just block with one, I reckon. Yeah. Nice. Got lots of drafting to do, as is always the case in Black Queenies. You normally see this with black white though because of Bright of Oblivion, but with dispute you can actually draw enough to uh, make it not matter. Five, okay. Acquisitions expert, we'll just let it resolve, then we'll shoot it. We'd be discarding the salvo anyway. I hope they can't play a sheldrum now. Because we'll be waiting till we can find another salvo if so. There's a chance they're not running the sheldred. Fairness of leeches, we need to be able to play things. Um, we can attack as is, like this. This is going to flip, giving them a 4 4 life linker. So, what we should do is. Hold on. So, these two are both just equipped here, so this. Unattach. And then this. Attach to this. Gives us one more. This can attach to this. Give us one more. Okay, <laughs> we're swimming in the inch blades now. At least it gives us something to spend our mana on. And here 
against the 4 4. So we could block with these two and not worry. Like so. They can obviously use removal on one of them, but it doesn't matter too much. These are basically endless chumps unless they deal with these ones. still top nine land in this deck where we haven't got any land. Jesus. I suppose we could have got this one up to a 3-3 three, three, but I think it's better to keep them as a blocker. Yep. Chump. Kill Chump. They draft. Endless blockers for them. Also endless blockers for us. There we go. Got our two extra companions for the turn. These will get a death touch now. Up. but we've got blockers. It'd be nice to find the sword that gives protection from black, wouldn't it? Clear full hand, but oh well. I mean, you can get through this eventually. So let's attach this here. I should have used it on this one. Uh, let's make it so that this needs to be blocked, shall we? They probably let that through, yeah. so that we can then make that a blocking tool as well. Oops, didn't mean to assume full control there. Oh my gosh, we're going to get milled to death by all these thieves guild enforcers. Well, there goes the sword of once and future. Nahiri would be nice as well, but I think that might have gone as well. No, not yet. So every raid knows a six card so. Okay. Looks pretty nice. So, I can equip that on here. We can. That only makes equips cheaper, sadly. 
Put this on here. Okay, we finally got something with the blade or cleaver on it to die. Made it threatening enough. Make us discard that though. A gabalier could be the best thing since we've got so much equipment. They've probably got the mirror for it, but. We've only got a 38% chance of boring land, so that's good. Oh, that's less good. Okay, we draft again. There's something get ah, protection from black. I was about to say, there's something in here that gives protection from black, which would be very helpful. Now, don't make me discard it, please. <laughs> if Nahiri doesn't go, we've now got a brilliant target for that. off the top. Each opponent discards three, then mills three. We're actually going to die to mono black mill. I mean, they have to keep casting this wall of creatures. Whenever it attacks, create two one one white soldier tokens that attack to attacking affinity for the That's gotta be it. Alternate cost sounds good to me. This thing will have trample. Put it on this, and then has this triggered this turn? No, this one hasn't. You can go on there. We've got a lot of stuff now. Still not milled Nahiri. And they're down to one rogue, so the milling out tactic is less good. Put all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Nihiri, a cat, a gabalier, so that would uh, that would work for them. Yeah, fine. Have you got any spot removal in this deck? Grasps. Yeah, they got grasps, which means they've probably got one for the ox the oxida finisher. So They'll need to do keep one for the Fina finisher and the Gavalier, I think. Because they both got trample. Also we're gonna get to exile basically the whole of our <laughs> whole of our library with Nahiri if we want to. Maybe draw some removal. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero. I like the sound of that. Okay. Let's hope that the only removal they have is like grasps because that will cost them life to use at least.
Ah, oh, there's a rebel sound there. Uh, get rid of this one. It just blocks one more damage, and I've not calculated how close we are before they can assign that as a blocker. We are down to nine, but they're going to have to use both of those. Thieves Guild enforces as blockers at least. Okay, so there's the finisher. Just in case they're low enough that we can fly over all the other creatures. We actually win, do we? 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, yeah. I don't know how we got through that wall, but we did it just in time. That was fun. Alright. That last one was fun. We haven't actually got any equipment in this one, but we can find some. There are many equipment cards in this deck. 4, 8, 10, 12, 15 equipment cards. Ah, oh, poor Jaw Gadeen getting cut down. That's not what you deserve as the first goal warden. Don't do it. Poor Jaw. Leave her. Him. Her. Him. Them. What? You did leave them. Okay. Wait, what? 61? Wait, what? No, what? This crap. Proudfoot, what is going on here? They a creature? No, no. Come off of it. Oh, it's this junk now. What are we playing against here? Pester, no, it's the toxic. Is it just toxic? Just do this. They've got protection. Okay. Could have realityed in resp response, but then they would get attacked. A creature that's going to do us damage, which I don't want to happen. Imagine if this brings in that annoying little shitty insect. That's probably what is going to happen. It's almost worse, isn't it? One. At least we've got our salvo still for the contaminator. We will get start to get toxic today. That doesn't have toxic, does it? No. But it's an insect. It is that insect deck. This is just number of equipments, yeah, okay. Okay, means we're taking a hit from the rock priest as well, but that is maybe okay. I would like for this to succeed. I don't know if it will. If they top deck protection for this contaminator, I'll be sad. The top deck it, it's just more expensive version. Die, die, die. This is getting bad. We're gonna be on fire. And they've got this piece of rubbish. I have to dual block the contaminator. At least we've got another Nahiri. Okay, that's not an option. I would have saved that and seen if my jewel blocked. Okay, we're gonna get to eight. Toxic. No, we're gonna lose the toxic man. 
This deck is such garbage, I can't believe I'm losing to it. It's just depressing. Blue and black. Where's the green and red sword, dude? Oh, they're just dead. We're just dead. Ouch. Alright. Let's see if we can get a good little win to wrap this up. These are nice. Lots of nice equipments to play with. Hello. Can't click on it, so. Now we're ready. So we'll go with this, then this, then this, so we can have an untapped one. What can we send? Something like this. Express our displeasure at them being a red deck. Oops. Okay. Nothing. Which probably means Jorkadine will be killed. But if it's at instant speed, then it's likely to be a face burn unless it's a braid. And using up any burn that they could send towards our face is a good thing. They have 8 cards here. 53 here. So they're running a 61 card deck. Yep, that could have been targeted at our face, so I don't feel too bad getting rid of that. Double Molten Impact is very nice. I think it's Mono Red. Um, let's put the sledge in because it gives us two creatures, then maybe we can get uh, the sword on one of them. Boom. Quite like the equipment sounds. Goblin and Gavalier from Rebel. You got any more shock type things on my poor little boys? used on that than killing off some of my nice artifacts that I have to come. I wonder if they are running any creatures or these impacts are dead in my hand. So I think we'll play this because it reduces the equip cost of this to zero. Um, we wouldn't be able to equip this anyway. Gives us another creature. So we can attack with this one. And if they kill the Gavalier in response, we can stick it on this. Yeah, feel free to use all that burn up on my creatures. They're all pretty disposable. Fine. We've still got another War Whip to go. Oops. speed removal this time. He must be running another colour or something. Where, why is all your proactivity? Ah, okay. That's quite a few cards. Oh well. It's just like a burn. Oh, I got the thrill seekers in here. So they have to block this. We could discard two and put an indestructible counter on it, I suppose. Cost them four life. Tip alt and seconds I haven't gone. Okay. Uh, 
Um, we can't actually get through this single indestructible thing. We haven't got any of these flying equipments in here, unfortunately. But we do have rebel salvos, which are pretty good against indestructible. Um, molten impact doesn't kill my dude, so he'll probably just lightning strike to the face. Nope. Molten impact it is. Oh, what? How did that do that? Oh, sulfim double damage, of course. Of course. Mm hmm. You're not that brave. Um, war whip. So. little setup going here. That's okay with me. There we go. I think we're through. I think we're in. We're in. We've knocked down the door. Okay, time for a quick look at the stats of the deck. Um, so, nine games on the video, win six, lost three. Pretty good stats, for, especially for an equipment deck. But we didn't get a good test against the mono red matchup because we're one for one. Um, this is a slight interesting thing. I mean, losing to a Golgari matchup. Um, interesting one. Um, but yeah, generally pretty successful, especially this latest version with the extra uh, fragment realities in. Um, I'm keen to try it more. I think it's fun to, to actually be able to play equipment for a change um, and to try a sort of different type of, um, of aggressive deck. I mean, it's got a bit of sustainability as well with the resolve, dodging board wipes. Um, and you know being able to keep adding lots of cheap creatures to the board for a, for an equipment deck is good i mean I, I would consider maybe trying to get a ward creature in here so that we can have a bit more like upfront sustainability possibly take out a jaw cadine and one of the one drops maybe one of the outfitters uh, for a couple of two drops that have got a ward i might have a look at that but otherwise i'm pretty happy with the deck i think it's a lot of fun um, and i think you guys will enjoy playing it too so thank you very much um for watching the video um, i do appreciate it and um, there will be a few days before the next video because I'm heading off to uh, Download Festival for a few days. So if anyone's going there, drop me a comment. Uh, maybe we can meet up. But otherwise, I'll be creating videos as soon as I'm back for that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.